Dr. Sage here. In this video, we're going to be talking about methods of culturing microorganisms. And in particular, what we're going to delve into in this video is the types of media. So by the end of this video, you should be able to discuss the three physical states of media and when each is useful, provide a brief definition for defined and complex media, and compare and contrast selective and differential media, and give an example of each type. So, like I said, we're going to be discussing media. No, not social media. The media that's used to grow our microbes in. So microbes must be provided with all of their required nutrients in an artificial medium. Some microbes require only a few simple inorganic compounds for growth. Other microbes require a complex list of specific inorganic and organic compounds. Certain microbes cannot be grown on artificial laboratory media and require cell cultures or host animals. Media is classified according to three properties, physical state, chemical composition, and functional type or its purpose. In regards to physical state, there are three physical states of media, which would be liquid, semi-solid, and solid. So liquid media are water-based solutions that do not solidify at temperatures above freezing and flow freely when they're in a tilted container, like in this image here. They include broths, milks, and infusions. Semi-solid media exhibits a clot-like consistency at room temperature. It contains enough gelatin or agar to thicken, but not to produce a firm surface. They're used to determine motility of bacteria, and also used to localize a reaction to a specific site. Solid media provides a firm surface upon which cells can form discrete colonies. It is used to isolate bacteria and fungi. Acre is a complex polysaccharide isolated from a red algae. It's solid at room temperature. It liquefies at 100 degrees Celsius. And once liquefied, it does not begin to solidify until it cools to 42 degrees Celsius. Any medium containing 1 to 5% agar usually has the word agar in its name. In regards to chemical composition of media, we have chemically defined or synthetic media, or complex or not chemically defined media. With the chemically defined synthetic media, it's media whose exact chemical composition is known. It may contain pure organic and inorganic compounds that vary little from one source to another. It has a molecular content that's defined by means of an exact formula, and it's very useful in scientific research. Complex media, on the other hand, contains at least one component that is not chemically definable. It contains extracts of animals, plants, or yeast. It may contain ground up cells, tissues, or secretions. For example, blood, serum, meat extracts or infusions, milk, yeast extract, soybean digest, or peptone. Nutrient broth, blood agar, and McConkie agar contain a rich mixture of nutrients for microbes that have complex nutritional needs. As far as the functional types of media, we have general purpose, enriched, selective, and differential. General purpose media grows as broad a spectrum of microbes as possible. It's complex media that contains a mixture of ingredients that support a wide variety of microbial life. This includes nutrient agar and broth, brain heart infusion, and tryptocase soy agar. Enriched media contains complex organic substances, blood, serum, hemoglobin, or special growth factors that fastidious bacteria require for growth. Growth factors can be used specific vitamins or amino acids. We also have selective and differential media. These media have extensive applications for isolation and identification and they permit preliminary identification of a genus or even species of a bacteria. Selective media contains one or more agents that inhibit the growth of certain microbes. They encourage a select microbe to grow, and they're important in the primary isolation of a certain type of microorganism from a mixed sample. Here's an example of a selective media. This agar has a pH of 5.6, so it's acidic, which allows the growth of fungi but it inhibits the growth of bacteria. Then we have differential media. This allows multiple types of microorganisms to grow, but displays visible differences between the colonies. 
differences in colony size or color, media color changes, or formation of gas bubbles or precipitates. Variations may be due to metabolism of certain ingredients that cause a color change. Here's an example of differential media. This triple sugar iron agar differentiates between fermentation of sugars and hydrogen sulfur gas production. For example, in these test tubes, this one on the left indicates that it can utilize several carbohydrates and it produces a gas. The next one over can only utilize glucose. The next organism over has produced hydrogen sulfide gas. In the last test tube, either is no reaction or the agar is not inoculated with a microorganism. We also have media that is both selective and differential. For example, this McConkie agar selectively allows gram-negative bacteria growth and differentiates bacteria that ferment lactose from those that do not. In other words, it's selective because it only allows gram-negative bacteria, not gram-positive bacteria to grow. And when the gram-negative bacteria grow, it can differentiate the ones that can ferment lactose by being bright pink from the ones that cannot ferment lactose by being this cream color. So that was a very brief introduction to the different types of media we use in microbiology. Until next time, this is Ben, Dr. Sage.